It looks as though it's going to be Senator Obama. It certainly looked not that long ago that she was going to be the nominee, Professor Lowndes. What happened? Well, I want to say a couple of things about the the last caller quickly. It's just that um, uh, just to answer her questions. The at least the University of Oregon, which is on a quarter system, won't be out for a couple more weeks. Okay. Um, so I don't I don't know what that means. The other thing is that um, she is right that it's the I five corridor, which is really the, the, the strong uh, uh, liberal part of the state. Although that's been changing in the last five years, uh, Bend has grown dramatically, which is a city in eastern Oregon. Hood River has also grown dramatically, and these become urban centers that are more likely to trend democratic. And in the, in the long term, this has, this has kind of given the state legislature to the Democrats and the governor's office, and it seemed to be growing democratic trends, although this is a very purple state in some ways. So I think mm-hmm. that she's right to bring up that there's, there's quite a lot of variation. The trends seem to be going in one, one direction at the moment. I think with Clinton, you know, one thing to remember about her, I, I, I lived in New York when she ran for the Senate there, and she has, she's an extraordinary campaigner and did, everybody thought, he called her a carpetbagger, said for sure she was going to lose, and, and it was a joke that she was even running in some ways. And she, she really made her, her, so her most loyal uh, supporters out of uh, upstate, rural, and uh, economically depressed cities in, in upstate New York, uh, Buffalo and the Finger Lakes region. And she did so by, by really uh, showing an ability to listen to those concerns of, of kind of uh, economically depressed voters and people who have rural issues. And, and she, she is a very formidable candidate, and I think it's shown that in this race. Even mm-hmm. you know, the fact that she's gotten as far as she has, uh, with I think a lot of I think there is a lot of sexism in the campaign. If you look at any most political cartoons which which feature her, show her as a shrill woman, as kind of or scary maternal figure, and yet she's been able to win over a lot of voters. I think the caller is right that that's no small thing that she has done something extraordinary. Which I think we, even though she will probably lose the nomination, although it's not entirely clear yet, uh, she some some. Uh, Historic changes have actually been wrought in the landscape, I think, yeah. uh, by now. She sure is a worker, isn't she? Oh, my gosh, does she campaign? Yes, yeah, night and day. She's yeah. like a machine. Yeah. Rich from Appleton is next. Hi, Rich. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Um, just a question. I was on the Internet probably about a week or so ago, and I cannot remember the site, to be honest with you. But uh, one of them kind of tied the Clintons to the early stages of Walmart. And with the job loss situation in this country right now probably being one of the big factors, I'm wondering if that got out. Do you think that would hurt Hillary, uh, Hillary's chances of getting the nomination? Professor Voss. I can't say that I have an informed opinion on that, and I'd, I'd feel guilty starting to blather about it. So I'm going to admit ignorance on this one. Professor Lowndes. Yeah, me too. Although I would say that I think with the, the I think at this point Clinton has been able to successfully frame herself as kind of a you know, um as an anti globalization liberal in some ways. In a way that was not true to when the Clintons ran or Bill Clinton ran in the nineties, he was you know, he was the the spearhead of NAFTA and other multilateral trade agreements. And uh Clinton has successfully um distanced herself from the kind of policies what we might call general international Walmart kind of policy. So I think that she is probably fairly safe in those regards. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for the call, Rich. We go next to um, Brad from Eau Claire. Hi, Brad. Hi there. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the extended campaign, the primary season here. Um, A number of pundits and bloggers have talked about how this could possibly hurt the Democrats, and I don't completely buy that argument. Um, Talking about Hillary's uh, role in picking up these once failed Democrats and showing her so- strong support here in the most recent election. Um, is there a chance that this can really draw the silent majority back into the Democrats um, in the fall? And do you think that Hillary would be willing to help Senator Obama secure this, this part of the electorate, um, even if she wasn't as a VP candidate? Professor Voss? I'm sorry, that question was very low volume. Could you uh, would, would she be willing to work to secure the voters that have gone to her, those lunch pail uh, Democrats, should she not be the nominee? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that uh, uh, already with the economic policies he's announced that, uh, you know, as he advertised to them, they'd, they'd be able to compare them to, uh, you know, to what the Republicans and McCain are offering. And, and, and for a lot of these Democrats, the sort of, the tax cut, uh, low low budget approach to government is not appealing, and and uh, 
their you know their economic uh, views will pull them one way, and and as often happens to them, their cultural views will often pull them in the other direction, and and you know usually what determines which way they go is how badly they're feeling that pinch of of the pocketbook, and and how bad their communities are feeling that pinch because uh, uh, of the economic troubles. And if these you know if these gas prices keep rising, and if food prices start following them, and, and other goods. Uh, you know, I think that Obama will find uh, very fertile ground for spreading that kind of economic populist message. Mm-hmm. What, what's the significance, and I don't know if this is completely true, but I've been hearing that Senator Obama plans to spend tomorrow night in Iowa, of all places. What does that mean? Uh, who are you asking? I'm sorry. Either one, whoever wants. I want to have yeah, both of you respond. Professor Voss, go ahead. Oh well, I, I think he's trying to reinforce the message that uh, you know that the media have been giving out, and that his campaign advisors have been giving out that he's already won, and it's time to start fighting McCain. And uh, by going back to a state that's already settled and the one that that kicked off his his strong run, uh, I think he's just trying to put the final punctuation mm-hmm. at the end of the of the primary and and start fighting McCain. Mm-hmm. And is tomorrow decisive in that regard in terms of uh, pledged delegates, Professor Lowndes? Well, it's decisive in terms of uh, pledged delegates. It, well, it's not entirely. We have to see what happens with uh, with the kind of continuing messes of Florida and Michigan. But I think it's, it's fairly safe to say that this this uh, cinches it for pledged delegates. Although yeah, I, uh, the most recent news I have read is that um, Obama is going to be careful about uh, declaring victory and may not do that tomorrow night. Uh, I think that he... Uh, I think wants to make sure that he is not seen as uh, being presumptuous at this point and, and um, you know, around kind of uh, issues that are still left. So I think, you know, by going to Iowa, he can kind of give a speech from there and, and not have to say anything. Just being in Iowa kind of makes makes the statement without him having to push it uh, hard himself. So maybe that's what he'll do. Mm-hmm. It is, when you think about it, a pretty remarkable story, isn't it? The whole campaign is people will be writing about this for a long time. But- no doubt no doubt, in so many ways. And, mm-hmm. and it may actually, you know, the political landscape m- may have been altered as a result of the kind of complicated gender and race politics that have played out here, as well as kind of, you know, in, in the context of a somewhat discredited, you know, you've got a sitting president who has some of the worst poll ratings ever and, uh, and a, you know, and a war and an economic mm-hmm. crisis. So I think the, the, it's the interplay of these things that actually make it quite interesting and may, may you know, may may show us some uh, party realignment going on. I mean, we, one person we've not talked about here uh, so much is McCain, and I do think it's quite interesting that McCain has a, has a lot of work to do to try to both mm-hmm. keep independence and also keep a conservative base, and that's not an attractive position for any candidate to be in. Yeah, well, we'll get to, we'll get to all of that in uh, a little while. Thanks very much to both of our guests, Professor Joseph Lowndes from the University of Oregon and Professor Stephen Voss, who is from the University of Kentucky. Thanks to Rhonda Fanning for producing the hour and to Rhonda Fanning as well for on-air production. We will have special NPR coverage of these primaries tomorrow night. News ahead.